Hi, this is Roger from Upswung. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to install preformed loops. When you're looking at a loop and thinking about installing it, the first thing that you have to think about is loop size. And generally speaking, loops have a 2 to 1 ratio on their sizes. And so that means what's common would be a 4 by 8 loop or a 6 by 12 loop or an 8 by 16 loop and this ratio this 2 to 1 ratio is, is good because it gives you good sensitivity and it's a good rule of thumb you can vary from that if you need a particular size but just keep in mind for optimum performance the 2 to 1 ratio is about the best for loops the next thing you need to know about loops is that they're very delicate or at least treat them delicately. The loops are copper wire with insulation around the wire and a preform loop is all made up for you. You don't have to hand make it and it's just ready to go into the saw cuts. But any sharp edges, any sharp corners, any sharp gravel and left over in the saw cut, anything that can notch into that insulation will wreck the loop. You have to treat that loop wire or the preform loop with great care making sure not to damage the insulation that's the golden rule of installing a preform loop or any other loop keep the insulation untouched so using soft tools like wood push rods or soft you know materials and make sure that before you put the loop into the saw cut that it's cleaned out free of gravel or any sharp edges on the inside corners so when you see this uh, picture here you see it noting the sharp corners on the inside need to be removed and also uh, in this area here as you get to the hole that you drill for your cylinder which is the connection point between the loop and the lead in wire that there's no sharp edges as the wire turns this corner and that this area here where the two wires come together and lead out that there's no sharp corners here. The other thing when you're planning a loop is make sure that you lay it out with some sort of concrete blocks or something carefully stretching the loop out being taking care not to damage the loop insulation and see how it looks in its location before you start saw cutting and marking the asphalt for the saw, saw cut you'll also notice that this is a preform loop this is all one loop and the two parts of the loop come together here and down into this hole that's drilled into the asphalt all the way into the dirt now it's important that when you do this that you have enough lead out or in other words don't use all of the loop leave some extra so the two parts of the loop can come together and reach the cylinder at a point outside of the loop so it can be like three inches six inches it doesn't matter but you just want to have the two wires come together so in other words the saw cut that you make is going to be a little bit smaller than the actual loop that you have to deal with and it's very important that you do it that way the loop that you see pictured here is a Reno PLB loop, preform loop which is a common representative example so as you're going through the instructions, m most manufacturers will have similar instructions and you can pretty much follow those. Instructions 1, 2, 3, and 4 pretty much generally talk about how to do the saw cut. You will overcut each corner so you get a full depth because you do have a round saw blade so you do have to o do overcuts to ensure that you get full depth on each corner and also um, the instructions talk about in step three removing the sharp corners and you'll have sharp, sharp corners as you make the turn here and you, you'll you generally saw cut about a quarter of an inch wide and about an inch and a half or even better deep would be appropriate and also placing in step five placing the loop into the saw cut don't push it all the way in at first inspect again for any sharp edges on the corner and carefully push it in just a little bit so that you can see that when you get to this point where the loop comes together and heads out to the point where the cylinder 
drops into the hole that the wires don't bunch so don't commit to anything until you feel comfortable that everything's just perfect and then just use a soft tool of wood or some kind to push the wire into the saw cut and don't use screwdrivers or anything with sharp edges in step seven eight nine it talks about not using sharp tools to push the preform loop into the saw cut and about the extra loop cable in the lead-in slot so basically again you're gonna have the cylinder where the two loop wires come together at that point you're gonna think about where you want to put in the hole in the asphalt all the way through to the dirt for your cylinder where the wires connect and so get the wire into the saw cut so you know the precise position here where to drill the hole so that the cylinder drops in and the other part of the cylinder is the lead out wire that goes to your loop detector in the um, uh, gate operator to hold the loop wire in place in the saw cut you use half inch backer rod which is like a foam rod that it compresses into the slot and it holds it in place and getting back to the cylinder here for a Reno A&E loop and other manufacturers have different sizes in this regard but you would drill about an inch and a quarter hole through the asphalt into the dirt where the um, cylinder the connection cylinder would drop in and you would later seal that up and steps uh, 12 and 13 again talk about using tools like a roller or a wood stick to push the preform loop into the saw cut and step 13 is use the best quality sealant available in your area for asphalt or if in this situation if it's concrete concrete sealant and generally that your contractor supply houses will give you the best quality product for that purpose and generally any quality asphalt sealant or concrete uh, caulking sealant will do the job if you have any further questions you can call 775-588-1475 extension 152 or option 2 or email us at mail at upswung.com. Thank you.